Bell, Button, and Sandal by Cody Arfer. Button Mash ground his teeth in rage. Urgh, fucking blue shells! I win! Sweetie Bell squeaked, hopping up and down. Kind of like, you know, that part in, you know, Season 2, Episode 5, where Rarity is mad at Sweetie Bell claimed. You know the one? Cool. Anyway, this little dance was unwise. Sweetie Belle knew that in Button's view, video games were serious business, and gloating about her narrow victory wasn't going to help his temper. Button's face turned red, and with a cry, he stomped on his special edition Pikachu-themed Nintendo 60 horse, smashing it to bits. A flying shard of plastic nearly missed Sweetie's cheek and cut off a lock of her mane. Button! called a stern voice from upstairs. What in Celestia's name is going on down there? Button paled. Uh, <laughs> sorry, sweetie. I better, um, I have to go uh, see a mare about a dog. Sweetie listened uneasily to the scampering of hooves and a tinkling of glass as Button fled the house, his mother rushing after him. Sweetie looked around the bedroom, unsure what to do now. She wasn't eager to clean up the mess of the slain video game console. At least the room had been messy to begin with. It was cluttered with dirty clothes, old half-eaten food, and broken jewel cases, because apparently even unicorn magic can't make those stupid things stay in one piece for more than a week. Shrugging, Sweetie Belle picked up a controller attached to another uninjured console, a hay station, and pressed the power button, not even bothering to check which game was in it. She was surprised to find she was playing one of the twelve of pony stalls. This obscure title had the dubious distinction of being one of the few Hay Station titles not officially licensed by Pony. The discs were manufactured and handed out to impressionable young ponies for free as part of the outreach campaign of a small, Nazareth-based cult. Shrugging, Sweetie admired the low-poly models and blurry textures as she tried to maneuver her character, a silent protagonist with a hopelessly generic horseshoe cutie mark through a crowd of NPCs clustered around the temple. Say, why would Friendship as Magic characters even want to think about horseshoes anyway? Don't they have senses of hooves? Remember that one time when Rarity poked a hoof on a sewing needle and it turned red? Imagine what it would feel like to have horseshoes nailed on a hoof like that. Swear a lot worse than hay, I can tell you that. Apparently, they were listening to a stallion giving a lecture on the steps of the temple. As Sweetie's character got closer, Parts of the lecture appeared in text boxes. Bro hoofed are the cool, for they shall become cooler, even unto a fifth more. Bro hoofed are the radical, for they shall become alicorns in a sixth part of a minute horizontal. Sweetie was strangely moved by the lyrical beauty of the stallion's words. Finally, Sweetie's character made it through the crowd and caught sight of the speaker. A Pegasus turned to her and said, Oh, it's Jesus himself, the son of Mare, isn't he dreamy? Sweetie Belle looked at the triangle mesh in question and found herself agreeing. Something about his austere white robe, his little yellow sandals. How do ponies wear sandals anyway? Don't ask me. His trapezoidal beard and his perfectly hashtag 0000FF eyes arrested her attention. Sister, what bringeth thee here? said Hey Seuss. Dot 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 dot. He added thoughtfully, speaking eloquently in a vernacular of video game characters. Thou needest say no more. See from the look in thine eyes that thou art the mare we sought. My disciples forged and distributed many of sacred discs throughout the wide world. Also that, one day, a pony worthy of carrying on the faith to a new generation, a pony who thirsted after the magic of friendship, would heed the call. Jesus approached the player character. The question is only... Art thou ready, Sweetie Belle? Sweetie Belle trembled with awe. She had named her character Homeslights. There was only one way Jesus could know her real name. In a squeak that was also a whisper, at a volume barely audible over the hammering of her own heart, she breathed. Yes? Jesus nodded. He was an earth pony, 
for at least he had no horn, and yet his body began to glow with magic. The particle effects, Sweetie had to admit, actually weren't that bad. His eyes flashed white and he reared, crying, BEHOLD! Now at this point in the story, Sweetie Belle would have been reborn as a new avatar of the one true god. She, supported only by Apple Bloom, Scootaloo, and an infant church would begin a revolution. For a thousand years, the cult of the sun and the moon had ruled Equestria with an iron fist. Few ponies could even remember the old days when seasons changed themselves, when Tartarus was sealed shut and nary a dragon must be seen, when the creator smiled on his children, and their lives were as cheerful as their colorful coats. But Sweetie Belle, the daughter of Mare, would spread the word, would show the common ponies the glory of the Lord, and in time, after many a mighty struggle, she and her fellow children of God would overthrow the fraudulent monarchy and reunite the peoples of Equestria. Ponies, zebras, griffins, and changelings alike under the banner of the Almighty. Which would all be kind of cool, come to think of it, but I've got shipping to do, so to hate with that. See, I know I didn't mention this before, but Button Mash's house was built on an ancient buffalo burial ground, and it was Friday the 13th. And Button had cracked a mirror in his haste to escape his mother's wrath, and a butterfly had flapped its wings in Philadelphia back in season one. Long and short of it is, Jesus's spell misfired. A bolt of holy lightning erupted from the TV screen, but it missed Sweetie Belle and forked into three. One prong of a lightning bolt hit a toy race car, one hit a Wonderbolts poster, and one hit a tipped over jar of smooth peanut butter. Oops, said Jesus. Then the hay station crashed. Sweetie whirled around. The whole room was glowing with an eerie green light. Sweetie watched in horror as a toy race car doubled in size, sprouted a pair of chicken's legs and a raccoon tail, and leaped out the window. Then Sweetie took a deep breath and ran screaming from the house. She proceeded to have many adventures in which Applejack lassoed the race car chicken raccoon, Fluttershy tried to calm it down, and Twilight helped Sweetie write a letter to Princess Celestia explaining how she learned not to play video games without her parents' permission. All of which was very exciting, but beside the point, because a real hero in my story has only now entered the scene. You see, the tipped over jar of smooth peanut butter, branded poopa pan, no wait, wrong fandom, sorry had been entirely empty. I mean, it had been half empty. Button had eaten some of the peanut butter, but had more than just peanut butter in it. It also had button in it. No, not button mash. It's certainly not that way. Get your mind out of the gutter. Hey, Seuss, I'm trying to write a fanfic here. I mean, button, the disembodied reset button from the special edition Pikachu-themed Nintendo 60 horse. Which, as you know, unless you're grossly ignorant of late 1990s Nintendo collectibles happens to be in the form of Pikachu's right foot. Button had just awakened from a very strange dream in which he and Alamosaurus, San Juan, and Isis had been peacefully munching on some ferns when suddenly this colossal asteroid-like object had just smashed into the earth. Then Button realized that this had in fact happened and after being smushed into petroleum for 65 million years, he had been made into a tiny piece of a special edition video game console. And if that wasn't bad enough, he was entirely submerged in a jar of peanut butter and had been rudely awakened from his ostensibly eternal slumber by a poorly timed bit of divine intervention. Such a course of events is bound to try the patience of even the most level-headed sauropod. Button, however, had been known for his stoicism. When his big orange sister and his little yellow sister had wept and wailed over the sudden death of their aged green matriarch from a broken neck, Button had just said with a mournful sigh, Yep. And so he decided not to panic. No, on the contrary, he thought. If he was a chunk of plastic soaked in a little cult's peanut butter. Will you quit that infernal tittering, you ninny? And well, what of it? Hell, they didn't have hay back in Cretaceous. He didn't even care. Unbeknownst to Button, his peanut butter bath had still been tingling with a bit of unused holy power. It was only now just released. Just as Button had decided he was not going to panic. So mighty was Button's stoicism, so great his indifference to the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, that it attracted the unstable holy power. A chorus of angels sang, and in a flash of light, a tiny mare appeared on a shelf next to the jar of peanut butter. 
She was a two-inch tall, light gray earth pony with a white mane and tail. Her cutie mark was a word, meh. What just happened? Said Button. How could he talk, you ask? Very well, thank you, even if he was a little difficult to hear under the mass of peanut butter. He hadn't expected a response, but the mayor said, I don't know. Who are you? Said Button. I don't know. How can you not know who you are? I don't know. You're impossible! Said Button, exasperated. Meh, said the mayor, shrugging. Don't you care about your own identity, your own origin story, your own purpose in life? No. There was a long pause. Finally, Button said, That's it! You're indifference itself! There was another long pause. And not just any indifference! But went on, realizing it. My indifference! A longer pause. Indifference? Said Button, choking him for the first time in his life. Or rather, his afterlife. I... I love you. Oh, said Indifference. Will you marry me? Eh, I guess. They had a lovely wedding in a shoebox, which was attended by some other scraps of the special edition Pikachu-themed Nintendo 60 horse, a daddy long legs, and a ball of lint. Button looked forward to many long years of marital bliss. During their honeymoon in Button Mash's sock drawer, however, Button discovered to his horror that Indifference was having a fling with Soren. Not the real flesh and blood Soren. I mean, the Soren depicted in the Wonder Bolt poster hanging on the wall. Darling! Cried Button, upon confronting his wife with a telling text message. How could you? The miniature mayor replied. Meh. 